Okay, so I have previously shown you how to draw a regular line and how to extend that into drawing full shapes in Unity using a custom C Sharp script. Today, let's use some basic maths and the helpful polygon collider component in Unity to add collision shapes to these lines and produce some extremely unique interactions and gameplay opportunities for your next indie dev project or game jam. Let's begin with the line controller script. I have covered this before, so I'll be very quick here. If you want to see it explained in more detail, I will leave a playlist for all my line renderer videos in the description. For those of you wanting the short version, here we go. Create a new script and name it line renderer. Since we're going to be referencing the line renderer in this script, it's best to add it as a requirement. This tells Unity whenever we add the line controller class to anything, if there isn't already a line renderer there, it will add one, ensuring that there is always one there. Now let's create a list of transforms that we assign in the inspector that the line will pass through. The reference to the line renderer component and when the game is run, set up the line renderer. Now every frame we want to give the line renderer the positions of the points we want to draw the line between. We can do this using the line renderer set position function passing it the array of the positions of all the points. We use the convert dot method here to make sure we're passing the position of the points and not the points themselves, so be careful. We also take off small value on the z axis to ensure it can actually be seen by the camera. And now all that's left to do is to add this component to our line and assign the nodes we want to draw the line between in the inspector. Okay, that is wonderful. We now have our line. We can begin to add the collider to it. Come over to our line and add a new script called line collision. This script is going to take care of calculating the vertices for the collider and use them to create a collider that other objects can interact with using Unity's built-in rigid bodies. Once again, we should first add a requirement for the line controller script as we will be using that a lot here. We also need a variable to store it in and grab it when the game begins. While we're making variables, we also need somewhere to store the points to draw the collision box between. So let's add a list of vector twos called collision points to do just that. Every frame we want to recalculate the positions because one of the points might have moved. So in the update function, let's do that. Now we just need to figure out how the algorithm behind this new function should work. I appreciate not all of you will care for how this algorithm works. Since it's fairly mathsy. So for you lovely people, here is the timestamp to go to to skip the explanation. For anyone that does skip, the code will be in the description. First up, let's get and store all the points the line renderer goes through. In the line controller script, add a method to retrieve the points of the line renderer using the line renderer's get position function. To know how thick the line is, we also need to get the width using another method in the line controller class. Using just this information, we can now calculate the four points that represent the corners of the line as shown with black dots here. So let's map out what we know. We know the positions of the two points and the gradient of the line between them. For a line in the form y equals mx plus c, m represents the gradient and is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now looking at how Unity creates lines, you can see that perpendicular to the line between the two points, there is another line of length w, where w is the width of the line. This line is bisected by the main line and as such has magnitude w over two on either side. By properties of triangles, if we call this angle theta, then this other angle is also theta. And by using the fact that the gradient of a line is equal to tan of theta, we can say that delta x, which is the x offset from the line point to the collision point, is equal to w over 2 sine of theta, which is equal to w over 2 sine of arctan or inverse tan of m. This rather wonderfully simplifies the w over 2 multiplied by m over the square root of m squared plus 1. The same logic can then be copied for delta y to reach a similar equation, delta y equals w over 2 over the square root of m squared plus 1. Now we have an equation for delta x and y, we just need to convert this into code. For each point in the line, there are two different ways to reach a point of the collider. You can add delta x and subtract delta y, or subtract delta x and add delta y. Let's store these two possible offsets in an array of offsets. The final step is to add each offset to each line position and return the list of four points so we can store them in our original collision points variable. To check this works, we can use this code here, which references gizmos to draw a black sphere in each position we just generated. If all goes to plan, we now have all the maths that's needed to make this work. So welcome back everyone. Let's bring this home with the final step. Back in the line collision script, we need to add a reference to a polygon collider 2D component, which we will use to draw our collider. Once again, setting it in the start method and making it a required component for the script. Coming down into the update method, we need to use the polygon collider 2D's set path method to, well, set the path, the four points we just generated. The first parameter here indicates which path these points are on, 
As we only have one line in this example, we only need one path, so we should select path zero. The second parameter is the list of points themselves, which we just tested and are stored in collider points. If we hit play right now, then we can see that this actually doesn't work. The correct shape has been formed, but it's far too small and very much in the wrong place. Looking at the Polygon Collider documentation, it isn't clear as to why this is happening. But I managed to find that the cause of this problem is that the points we have generated are in world space and the Polygon Collider uses local space. This minor hiccup can easily be rectified by using transform.inverse transform point on every point in the list before we pass it to the Polygon Collider. We now finally have a working collision detection script for a line renderer, how cool is that? If we want to take this one step further though, let's take a look at how to get this working with multiple lines in the same line renderer. I'm going to build this off of my previous shape video, but you don't need to do that at all. You can just simply add more dots to this line that we've been working with already and make the changes to the code I'm about to show you. To get the line collision script working with multiple lines, this is what we need to do. The requirements, the attributes needed, and the awake method stay the same. The late update and our calculate collider points have to change very slightly. Instead of getting the positions in our calculate collision point function, we now grab them in the update method. We then check how many points we have. If we have less than two points, then we can't draw a line between them. So we set the polygon collider path count equal to zero. Remember the path count from earlier is where you can draw multiple shapes in the same polygon collider, which is exactly what we need here. So if there are no lines that we can draw between, we need to set this to zero to get rid of anything that might have been there before. If we can draw a line though, we need to get the number of lines by getting the number of points minus one. You can see if you had three points, then you would have two lines. If you had five points, you would have four lines, etc., etc. Now we want to set the polygon collider path count equal to the number of lines that we have. This is just so we have a different path for each line. So each one can be drawn individually and independently from the others. Essentially, each line needs its own collider. So we just add each collider. Think of these as like sort of a layer. We're just layering all the different colliders on top of each other. And we need, if we had five lines, we need five different layers to put all the lines on. Now we use a for loop to loop through every line that we have and grab the current position. So this is going to be the two points that make up the line that we're currently working on. So it's going to start off with the first point and the second point when i equals zero. Then when i equals one, we're going to grab the second point and the third point. When i equals two, we're going to grab the third point and the fourth point, etc, etc, until you get to the end of the line. Once we have the points required for our current line, we're going to do the same thing that we did before, but slightly differently. Now we're just getting the current collider points, not all the collider points. And to do that, we're going to pass this function, the current points as an attribute instead of calculating them inside the method. But this method itself stays exactly the same. Then down here, exactly the same as always, but instead of setting path zero, we're going to set path I to make sure that each line is drawn on its own separate path. Just like that, we can now draw whatever shape we fancy. If we come back into the scene view and take a look at the line, you can see that there has been a different line drawn between every single dot. Very fancy. And if we come back into the polygon collider and the points, you can see that we have five paths here, each path representing each line. So that's path one, that's path two, that's path three, that's path four, and that's path five. I started making this series because I didn't understand how to use the line renderer at all, and I couldn't find many resources on it. So if there's anything else that you guys want me to cover for the line renderer, please be sure to let me know. This can be combined with other systems I've used before. As always, links will be in the description. Hopefully, if I remember to put them there, if I haven't, go and berate me in the comments so you can go and download all of this code if you don't want to copy it yourself and just save yourself the time. That's been it from me. Hope you all have a wonderful day. And as always, happy coding.